With Groku escaping in an H-type Nubian yacht alongside the sabered hand, Kellerin Beck, during Order 66, I thought it'd be cool to discuss the various Nubian vessels that we see throughout Star Wars. After breaking them down, I will rank which one I like the most, and I hope you let me know your favorite in the comments below. But let's not wait any longer, time to explore the many designs of Naboo's best starships. The first one on the list is the Naboo Queen's Royal Starship. The modified J-Type 327 Nubian, as with every vessel on this list, they were developed and created by the Theed Palace Space Vessel Engineering Corps. Designing this modified space yacht for the Queen of Naboo is one of the greatest honors an engineer can aspire to. This vessel in particular was unique and one of a kind. Its hull was finished with chromium, which signified the royal house of Naboo. Its structure was built around the Nubian 327, sublight and hyperdrive propulsion system making it fast and agile for a starship of its size, being only 76 meters in length. The unique hyperdrive of this vessel also made it stand out. Rather than having a complicated setup of connections and cables, the modified J-Type featured a hyperdrive that looked more like a work of art. Engineers were able to improve this hyperdrive by making it a class 1.8, which is nothing short of impressive for this yacht. During The Phantom Menace, we see this starship escape with Queen Amidala and her squad. The only reason this vessel was able to pull off such a daring attempt is due to its speed and agility, and of course our boy R2-D2. This handcrafted royal starship is a prime example of the Naboo people's love for art and craftsmanship. Next on the list is the Naboo Cruiser. This custom-built J-type vessel was seen during the opening moments of Attack of the Clones, before it was promptly blown up. The unique sound of this vessel and its insane width of 91 meters really make it unique to the others. Its hull featured the royal house's chromium finish, but it also had special additions added to its wings. After the invasion of Naboo, stricter security measures were taken to protect the royal house and the senator of Naboo. Fighter recharge ports were added to the wings, two on each side. This means that the Naboo cruiser was able to carry its own fighter escort. While the N1 starfighter does have a hyperdrive, they are rather small fighters and cannot carry large amounts of fuel. This modification ensures that the fighter escorts will be present to defend any one of the royal house and honestly, it's kind of a cool idea. The engineers of Theed learned many lessons from the invasion of Naboo and made modifications to their vessels. This specific starfighter had increased deflector shields with extensive projector units that circulated the energy of the force field efficiently. Its mass was also greatly reduced. Coupled with its increased engine output, it made this vessel faster than previous Nubian craft. Not to mention this model was given two hyperdrives, both capable of transporting the ship through hyperspace on their own. So, no chance to have to rely on a junk trader from Tatooine. The last of the vessels I'm going to mention is of course Padme's starship, the aforementioned H-type Nubian yacht. As with all her craft, this vessel is customized for her specifically. This is by far the most sleek and small of Nubian designs made for the royal house. It is only around 48 meters in length, and its small profile and mostly covered engines help it keep off enemy scopes. The H-type craft was specifically designed to be stealthy and a quick getaway vessel. That's why we see it perform so well on Anakin and Padme's missions, as well as Kellerin Beck's escape with Grogu, where he evades and outruns Imperial V-Wing starfighters. While it does not have offensive weapons similar to the previous two vessels, it comes with powerful shields and electromagnetic ion countermeasures. Should it have a pair of laser cannons? Well, maybe. But the Royal House of Naboo doesn't believe in that sort of show of force on their vessels. They leave it to the N1 Starfighter to mop up the enemies. Which actually brings me to an honorable mention. That being the N1 Starfighter, of course. This Starfighter is one of my favorite designs in all of Star Wars, and the fact that we get to see Mando flying around in a modified N1 is hands down awesome. I have made an entire video on this incredible craft, so make sure to check that out. All I will say is that these Starfighters pack a serious punch with twin blaster cannons and a proton torpedo magazine able to hold up to 10 torpedoes. But to get back to the three Nubian starships I mentioned before, I will now rank them based on my own preferences, and again, please let me know your favorite ones in the comments below. My personal favorite is the custom J-Type Naboo Cruiser from Attack of the Clones. Its design is really unique and the sound of the vessel is just fantastic. Not to mention its ability to carry its own Starfighter Escort. Next, it's gotta be the H-Type, 
It's fast, stealthy, and definitely one of the most advanced models. The Naboo Queen's Royal Starship isn't bad, but it does rank at the bottom of my list, as I find it more of an art piece and not a very practical design. Its hyperdrive is difficult to source parts for because it is so specially crafted. It definitely fits the pre-Clone Wars era and would definitely have to be replaced following the aftermath of the invasion of Naboo. That's all I have to say about the Nubian starship yachts of Star Wars. I love how different these vessels are and I don't usually go in depth on starship yachts, but they deserve some love for saving Anakin from Tatooine and now Grogu from Order 66. Let me know what you think. Feel free to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more Star Wars fun. Remember, your focus determines your reality. May the Force be with you.